Hey there, what's up everyone? My name's Terrifiger and my room is complete. Check it out. The whole thing is done. It's all uh, orange now, that's the color that I picked, and the ceiling is fully white. Um, I already I already explained in the other video, um, the, the one that was that was called Painting My Room, that was describing what that was describing the work in progress that I was currently doing and the wall painting was like pretty much done but yeah now that now everything's been uh, moved back in and and uh, I've uh, done some rearranging so I've got my bookshelf over there I've got my display case right there on top of it is is just like a tub of Lego and then up here you can't really see it but up here is a display case that I've got some of my Lego uh, works on there it's kind of like the expert sets where you like connect pieces of like a street and there's shops and everything and then i've got a big uh robo raptor that i had as a kid like facing it looking like it's like attacking it kind of so it's done now this is what the room is going to look like now um when i'm recording my new videos um and as i said in the painting my room video there are still going to be videos of mine that are with the old look of the room where the room is still purple with the white stars um i've still got a lot of videos stockpiled there um of, of me playing games and, and stuff with the old look of the room so you can still expect some of those videos to be done but but all of the future videos are going to be there are the future videos of the point of me recording this one right here are going to be done with this new room and now now i won't need to always close the curtains and then turn on a lamp to like illuminate my face because my computer is now facing against the wall where the window is and now i can have the natural sunlight illuminating my face unless i'm recording late at night in which case i'll have to close the blinds and then turn on the lamp anyways but I, but like this way it's um I've got some natural illumination, which should definitely, which should definitely help and be less electricity costing. So my lamp up there won't be needed very much, but I've got it there, like just in case. But anyways, so there's probably not going to be like, like for the time being, right now there's probably not going to be too many of these videos, of videos of with this orange room out yet. Because I'm still wanting to, ha I st I've still got all of those videos with the purple room with the white stars. You probably can't tell because in all of those videos I've closed the window and then turned on the lamp. Because the way that the computer was, the computer used to be over here. And then the sunlight would always like create glare on the webcam and then my face would always be really dark. And that was not too good. So I so that's why I always close the windows and I'm just saying that now I don't need to do that anymore because of, because the window is no longer in the view of the camera with the way the the computer is now. I had the option of uh, rearranging my room um ever since I when I moved my stuff back in here after painting and this is the place that I want it to be because it'll honestly be more convenient. So now it's here. But as I said, yeah, there's probably not going to be too many videos coming out of these. I mean, I still do have have some games that I'd like to record, and I'm going to record them in this new room. But in terms of just being generally creative, I kind of have had that dwindling a little bit. And and um, I, I guess I'll tell you why. So for quite a while now for like about a month a little like about a month and a half I'd, I'd estimate I'd wager there I've been um I've been kind of my creative my creativity has kind of been dwindling and that's because that a lot of stuff has been you know several things have happened with me most of them are like are like with my eyes affecting my vision and at the beginning of it, it really stressed me out the first thing that happened was back when we got like a humongous heat wave uh, that was that was like around the end of June, the beginning of July, something like that. And after and, and after the apex of it, after 
after the, the the day after the apex of the heat wave, right when things were starting to cool down, even if it was just, even if it was just by a couple of degrees, I noticed that there was like a, a tiny dark speck that was moving around my vision wherever I looked, wherever I looked my eyes, there it was, and it started stressing me out a lot because I didn't know what the hell it was. I asked my mom, and she said that it was a floater, an eye floater. And I and I still wanted to be sure, so we went to the eye doctor the very next day, and he took a look at my eyes, and he saw that yeah, it's a floater. Um, and that was where I got a lot of information about them, both from him and from my own research. Um, he he said that the one that was in my eye, there's there's like two different kinds of floaters. One of them is there's one that's harmless, and there's another type that could impact the vision more and could uh, be more critical and have to have more critical attention looked at it. The kind that he saw was the kind that was harmless, and not only that, but he also said that it was very, very small, so it was so it was no cause for like serious concern. It was the most that it could do to me was just be distracting and or annoying and and at the time it was also anxiety inducing because it was still so new to me and and I was used to have my vision like completely clear and now I've got the, and now I've got this little dark shadowy speck moving around the thing that was mainly worrying me about this was that I was worried that it was going to impact my sleep that I wasn't going to be able to get good night's sleeps anymore because I'm autistic and as a result I'm I'm a lot more I'm a lot more sensitive to audio stimuli and visual stimuli so if I so if I'm like feeling tired and I'm lying in my bed and then my eyes are closed and I'm trying to go to sleep and then I just like see this little dark speck moving like the, behind the darkness of my eyes I'm seeing an even darker speck moving through there it's going to shutter my senses awake like it's that sense like my senses are that sensitive and and then uh, like I would likely not be able to get any good sleep anymore and that's what I was worried about but after two weeks of having of having the floater, or by by now it's floaters, but I'll get to that in a moment. After about two weeks of having these, I have, I have found out that they actually don't impact my sleep at all because I cannot see them for the life of me at at all if when I'm trying to go to sleep, which is a big relief. And that was and and after two weeks of that, I I it didn't stress me out anymore. And and by now it's been like oh three more weeks since then, three to four more weeks since then, since I, since it stopped stressing me out. And they and ever since then, they've just been distracting and or annoying, just like the eye doctor said they would be. But anyways, after the, day, the very day after I went to see the eye doctor, very day after that, I ended up getting more. I got one of them, in, one of them is in another one, I got another one in this eye, it's a very it's even smaller and even fainter than the first one that I got and while the first one resides in like the bottom left corner of my vision this one resides in the top left corner of my vision and it's and it barely comes out at all and then I also got a few more of them this side that are in a specific kind of like web formation and they like stay in that formation in the upper part of my eye of my right eye like really out of my view I can only see them if I'm outside pretty much or if I'm reading and if I like look, they still drift. They're not locked in place. They still drift. And, and if I like look left and right too much, then I can kind of quote unquote shake them loose and then they can like slowly drift down. And then if I look up, they go back up again. So if they're not locked in place. It's not something uh, serious. And then uh, and then I've also got got one in the shape of a, in a form of a string in this eye because they can also be in the form of strings too. And I mainly only see it if I look left and right. I can see it kind of like drifting across my eye like that. Um, and that's only if, if, if the area is well lit enough, of course. Um, but after I got all these new floaters, then I started re-panicking all over again. So we went to the eye doctor again the very next day. Yeah, it was only like, like a two, like, I went to the eye doctor one day and then two days later I went again. I went to the same place, but it was a different guy who checked me out and he saw that like, yeah, there were more. Funnily enough, the first time that I went and he, and and the guy who saw that there was one in this eye, he said that he also saw one in this eye, but it was like way off to the side and to the point where I wouldn't be able to see it. And he was right because I didn't even know it was there until he said. <laughs> but but yeah, now I've got other ones. And and the se and the second time that I went when he checked out for more floaters, he actually uh, told me how they work. 
he, he had said that because that's the insides of a person's eye is called the vitreous humor, something like that. And it's kind of like a gel like substance. And then the parts of the, and then, but then there can be like parts of the vitreous humor that liquefy. And those little liquefied bits are the floaters that like drift around in the vision. And they're mostly harmless. Um, the, the kinds that are more critical, if there's like larger ones that I, that can actually block out parts of the vision, or if there if you get like a sudden increase of them, just like a whole bunch of them, or if you're getting like light flashes in your eyes, which are the, which are the floaters like tugging on the retina, and then it registers in the brain as a light flash, or if the floaters are stationary in your vision which means that they're not the which means that they're that those floaters are not actually caused by by like little bits of liquid in your eye and they're instead caused by an actual tear in the retina and that tear is the little black part that's stationary or if you're getting eye pain then any of those things mean that your that your actual vision could be at stake and then if you leave it alone for too long then it could possibly result in that eye going blind. So if any of those symptoms are there, you got to like check it out immediately. And and all the floaters that I've got are are benign, which means that they're all harmless. None of none of them are are harmful to me in any way, which which is good. I'm very thankful about that. And and he, the way that he said that it worked is because that the reason we're able to see anything around us in our day-to-day -day lives is because of light entering the eyes. The, the whole reason we're able to see outside during the daytime is because of the sunlight entering, uh, entering the eyes and then illuminating our vision for us. And the floaters, like, get in the way of that sunlight and then they cause the little shadows on their eyes and that's why they're the little dark specks. But if it's nighttime, if it's like really dark and there's barely any light to get in, heck, even if it's like a, if it's nighttime and I'm trying to go to sleep where it's a completely dark room and my eyes are shut, there is no light to get into my eyes. Therefore, there's no shadows to be cast. That's why I can't see them when I'm trying to go to sleep. And it's also, and it's, and so basically like if it's, the lighter it is, the easier it'll be to see the floaters and the darker it is, the harder it'll be to see them to the point where they're like pretty much invisible. Completely invisible, I'd say, if you're in a dark room with your eyes closed. Is it not like if you like close your eyes, then you won't see them anyways? Because like the way I am right now, if I close my eyes, the sunlight is shining on my eyelids, so it's creating that kind of like orangish reddish glare on my eyelids, and I can still see that that little speck of one. Um. So and and out of all of the floaters that I've got, the one that I see every single day is the very first one that I ever got. The one that resides in the bottom left corner of my left eye. Like it, it's the most active one. It can it drifts like pretty much anywhere in my vision, and it's inconsistent. So like wherever I look, it can like drift a little bit, or it can like zip across, or heck, it could even like go and then slow down right in the center of my vision. And then whenever I try to look at it, it darts away. It's like the world's worst laser sight. But it's non-harmful, thankfully. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad it's non-harmful. And from, from what I was looking at online for like what could cause them, I realized that the way that I was living my life, I actually am surprised that I didn't get them sooner. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Because like like okay, there's like certain things that can that can increase the risk and certain things that can decrease the risk. Um things that can increase the risk is like getting too much screen time, getting like no exercise or not enough exercise, um not, not eating enough fruits and vegetables. Those are all things that I did because because I'm I'm like a pretty unhealthy guy for like years. For several years, I didn't like to go outside and do or, or or exercise at all. I liked to just sit on my uh, sit on at my computer for 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 up to twelve hours a day at the very most, and and that was and that was like for years. And also, they said that the well, when I say they, I mean online, but they said that um, with regards to foods, deep fried foods, sugary foods, processed meats. And foods with high carbohydrates like bread and stuff, 
those can all increase the risk and that was and on those kinds of foods were pretty much my entire diet there were there were a few there were a couple of things that I that I like to have that that didn't bleed into it very much but most of the time I those those were like my whole diet and with my research of what could cause them I also saw that dehydration and lack of sleep and stress can also cause the floaters and I do know that at the end that that on the day that was like the end of the apex of that big heat wave which was where I first started getting them I do know that during the heat wave um I had gotten three nights in a row of terrible sleep like only two to three hours of sleep per night and 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 then the day after those three those three nights of bad sleep was when the apex was over and the heat was starting to wind down and during the and during the heat wave I also wasn't drinking enough water which could have led to the dehydration and I do recall I believe that that the three nights of that when I was getting bad nights of sleep that was also stressing me out so I think that like the way that I was living my life already I was already primed up to get these floaters but then the dehydration the lack of sleep and the stress possibly just pushed it over the edge and then I ended up getting them so I'm surprised I didn't get them sooner but I've got them now um I could technically like like get get rid of them with like um, there are ways to get rid of them. Techn typically, there's not, but there are like a couple of uh, surgery related ways to to handle them. But it's not recommended unless the floaters are the type that are more critical that could actually impact your vision. The type that I've got sh probably shouldn't be uh, done with uh, with surgery because it's not really that drastic. Um, one of, there's only two ways of surgery that I know. One of them, mainly for the larger floaters that block out the vision, is that they like zap a laser into the eye and it breaks up the floaters into like these really tiny ones, and then that way they're harder to see. Another one is where they kind of like inject the eye, like I think with like a needle, and then they extract some of the vitreous humor. That's the gel stuff inside of the eye. They extract some of it or all of it, like enough to like suck out the floaters, and then. I think that like they replace they replace the inside of the eye the empty space of the inside of the eye with water I believe and then the and then the body will will the, the the person's body will generate more vitreous humor for the eye over time which will replace the water that's inside of it but doing that is risky because like some while it does work um sometimes it doesn't um, it, it it could cause like a blood clot at the point where it's injected. It could cause internal bleeding. It's it could it could go like cause floaters to show up again. It could so you'd be back to square one. Sometimes sometimes these surgeries work, but sometimes they I they either don't work or they even just make things worse. And if the surgery gets like goes really wrong, like if it really gets botched then it could cause the person to go blind in that eye, possibly. But things are not that drastic for me. The type that I've got, sure, they're annoying. And sure, if I'm trying to, like, type stories on the computer or trying to draw, then and I'm seeing that one little one that's drifting around my vision constantly, um, sure, it's just, it can be distracting, but it's nothing, like, that critical. So, so I don't need to take, like, big measures like that against them and in the meantime what I've been doing is making some lifestyle changes so I've been spending less time on the computer for the past few days as of now recording this for the past few days I've only spent like about five minutes on the computer at the very most and most of my other time I've just been spent reading and stuff um I've been taking a walk around the block every day I've been having so I've been having some pineapple um, every day uh, every night as well because I also because also during my floater research I there was a Taiwanese study that actually read that pineapple can actually help to get rid of floaters they, they did like a test and they found that the with with people eating pineapple for three months they found that like they had a reduced amount of floaters and all of the people averaged at age 42 and and like I'm age 23 currently but but um that doesn't mean that it wouldn't work for me and and yeah the the, the test took place over the course of three months um there were like there were like three groups one of them has a little pineapple another one has a medium amount of pineapple and the last one has a large amount of pineapple the, the amount that I'm having right now is more on the the little amount of pineapple side um, which means that there could be that, that there is a possibility that it might not help at all 
but it's a bigger per but but it's a bigger possibility that it will help. And currently, as of right now, it's only been like about a month and a half at the very most, which is not enough time. I need to like take the time that I've got all these floaters and then double it with all of my pineapple leaving. And granted, I do know that there have been a few days where I uh, skipped the pineapple, where I didn't have it on that day. And I don't know if that causes all of my progress to be reset or anything, or if it just kind of like sets it back just a little, or it doesn't do anything. Um, but but it's, yeah, I'm I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try. It's uh it's it's healthier because because of pineapple of vitamin C. And at first, I didn't really like the pineapple because it was so such so strong of a taste. But I've gotten accustomed to it now. And also with my research, I also found that floaters they could just go away. They, they could just like drift out of your vision or gravity could make them settle on the bottom of your eye and then you wouldn't be able to see them. And it usually takes about a month, but it could be up to six months. And when I went to the eye doctor the first time then and told him about that, he said that, yeah, it could be a month, it could be six months, it could be a few years. Like you never really know with floaters, they're unpredictable. It's about, about a month and a half and all of the ones that I've got during the beginning of July, they're still there. And of course, and of course, the brain does like eventually filter them out, so you don't notice them anymore. As a matter of fact, my mom actually has some. Like, in, in out of my family, my mom, my dad, and my two sisters, um, my mom is the only other person other than me who who's got floaters as well. And she said that I think that she said that she developed them around the same uh, when she was around the same age that, that I am right now. But she didn't like take any of the measures to try to like cope with them or get rid of them that I'm doing now. And instead she just like put up with them and tried to ignore them. And by now in her life she doesn't even notice them. And she, she doesn't notice them unless she actively tries to look at them. But if she's just going about her daily business then her brain just like filters them out. And that's what I'm hoping mine will do but I, it will not take like a few months for that to happen. It's gonna take like... I'm sure that it's going to take like a long time for my brain to filter them out, especially considering that they're kind of unpredictable. I had actually said early on when I had the floaters that if, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, um, that if they were like more rooted in a specific spot of my eye and they stayed there, like no matter where I looked my eye, instead of just drifting willy nilly whenever I moved my eye, if they were more stationary on my eye, then I'd be able to get used to them easier. But, but incidentally enough, if they were more stationary on my eye, then that means that they're the type of floaters that are more critical. So it's actually a good thing that they're not that. They're just the drifty ones. Man, I've I've like at this moment I've talked for like about twenty minutes about about these floaters. I've already talked about it with my mom a whole lot. I've talked about it with my dad somewhat. I told my sisters about it a little bit as well, and and I still just had like so much to say, and most of it was reiterating what I already told them. But then there's also other, so I guess some, like a bit of other stuff that I'm saying in this video. <sighs> I don't know. It just really went off on a tangent there. But yeah, um, and more recently, like in the past few days, there's been other stuff. Um. With me painting my room, I was sleeping on the couch for four nights in a row, and that was causing my neck to also hurt, cramp quite a bit by the time everything was done. And and then also the day after I had moved back in, then I realized I was also starting to get headaches, mainly in my temples. And when I looked online for, for the cause of that, it said that the temple headaches could be caused by, they're mainly caused by stress or tension. And with tension, one site even was more specific. They said tension in the jaw, the head, or the neck. And I had a lot of tension in the neck during that time. And by now, the tension in my neck has like pretty much completely gone away. Maybe a little bit of it still remains. But the headaches have also like reduced now. And um, I still get them like here and there occasionally, but they, but um, not as much. And but like not not as much. Like currently, I don't feel any right now. But sometimes I do kind of like feel it flare a little bit on like one side or the other side. Um, and then and then it either just fades away on its own or I just kind of like rub the spot for a little bit and then it goes away. Um, but yeah, that was something that I had. Something else that's uh, more recent that I went to the eye doctor again more recently now 
for for this was I noticed that there was something else happening with my eyes, mainly my right one. It's, it's something like you know how when you um when you look at something really bright and then and then it causes you to kind of get like an after image in your eye and then whenever you blink it looks like the after image flares for like a split second i've gotten something like something like that in my right eye that was that kind of like was something that comes and goes for like a couple of days but by now it's like constantly there it's 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 kind of like an after image there if I'm just staring in one spot, then I don't really see it. But if I move my eye, then it does that little split second flare. And if I blink, it does that split second flare. Um, the times that I notice it the most are are um, in, inconveniently enough. I notice it like the most, like if I'm in my room or if I'm uh, in the shower, like the the white shower wall. Um, it's something that's unrelated to the floaters because this thing is not behaving like a floater. It's behaving like something entirely different. It's behaving like an after image in the eye caused by something bright, but it's not going away. And in the right eye, it's in the shape of uh, like a small horizontal oval located just a little below my pupil. And I think like one or two days after I got it, um, then in the left eye, I also got one that was in the shape of like a really tiny dot that was in the top right corner of my... Uh, well, just a little bit in the top right above of my left pupil and at first I thought that both of them the tiny dot and the oval were both in the same eye but I actually found out today that like no it's uh the, the, the tiny speck is in this one and then the the little ovals in this one and then and then also again more recently after, uh, I shortly after I got back from the eye doctor um I had noticed that now that that now um if I like move my my eyes like mainly this is in my left one I'm noticing that the that now I'm also getting like what looks kind of like a little lightning flare around the edges uh, around this side and a bit around this side on my left eye and that is actually what the light flashes that the more critical floaters were described as online I already told my mom about the little uh, light flash in there and she thinks that it's either nothing, I can't remember what she said, she said that it's either like nothing to really worry about or that I'm just being paranoid. Um, but the other thing that I had, the, the little one that, the, the little one that was in the little shape of the oval in this eye, the little uh, after image thingy, I did go to the eye doctor for that and when I described it to him, um, and, and if you're wondering, I went to the same place and I think it was the same guy that I saw the very first time I went. Um, and he, and after I described it to him, then he said that he'd, that he'd like me to see an ophthalmologist. And, and while the, the eye doctor that I went to, the optometrist, the, the best that they can do is like take a look at it and then rule out some things and then make an educated guess then the ophthalmologist is the one that actually gets into the nitty gritty of it and they can actually see for sure 100 percent for sure whether or not anything is actually wrong and so and so like and after i told him that then of course he like um did the same thing for when i went for the regular floaters he gave me like the eye drops in the eyes to make my pupils dilated um but he still he, he put the eye drops in my eyes and then he told me to like to like walk around the the, the place for like about uh 20 to 25 minutes um so that the so that the, they can get fully dilated and then once they went and then once i came back then he like shone the light in there so you could take a look inside um he, he took a look in there um and he said that all he could see were just some benign floaters which were the ones that i already had um and he said like nothing looked really serious like the cornea and the retina in both eyes like he checked this one first but then he checked this one for good measure and he said that in both eyes it looked fine everything looked totally fine but he still want but he'd still like me to go see the ophthalmologist just to be on the safe side and i'm going to be going in in the beginning of september around the beginning of september um at the time that i at the time that i went to see him for it it was it was going to be like about three weeks since that i would go to see the ophthalmologist and i can't remember how long it is ago now i didn't i it wasn't like very long ago that i went to see him about about the about the little after image in the eye but um yeah, I, I I tried like looking online to see what it could be, and I was getting nothing. I was getting nothing that was giving me any definitive answer as to what it could be. 
But I do know that when they were talking about the light flashes caused by the floaters, they had, I was I was actually like, like back back when I first ever got the floaters, and they were saying about the more critical symptoms. I was thinking like, what do they mean by light flashes? Like, what do they what do they actually look like? So I know what to how what what like if I ever got them, would I be able to to be like, oh yeah, these are the kind that are related to the floaters like what like what they look like and i found out that that the kind that are caused by the floaters are off to the side of the eyes like kind of in the peripheral vision and they look like streaks or like lightning and that is what the one in this in this left eye looks like like kind of above here and there i notice it mainly like if i of course if i like look around at the eye i can see it like flare like that um and again i could i see it the most if i'm in the shower or or like against the wall in my room and the walls are like pretty barren right now i'd like to put some posters or something up not not only to like help me not notice this stuff more but also to try to like to try to like um add some more to the room basically because currently it looks kind of empty and i'd like there to be some more to it but but yeah if whether or not this this uh little this little thing in my the oval thing in this eye is anything um and whether or not the little jagged thing around the side of the vision that i'm seeing is anything um once i go to the ophthalmologist they'll check it out and they'll see whether or not anything is like critically wrong with my eyes probably nothing is really wrong with my eyes most likely not but it's better to be on the safe side and also i realized that considering i had noticed these little the little lightning kind of light flashes in my left eye considering i noticed it just after i went just after i came back from the from the optometrist and he said that and he had checked out my eyes and already said that they looked fine um the little the little uh those kind of light flashes in this eye are most likely nothing to worry about because if they were i i, I most because because i clearly already had though that little lightning light flash beforehand and i just didn't notice i just didn't notice them at all until coming back from the eye doctor and and if it was serious then if he took a look at the eyes then he probably would have noticed that like oh the retina looks like it's been tugged on or anything like that and no he said that they're in perfect health there were like pictures taken of like the inside of the of my eyes he like shone a light to look inside and he said that no the cornea and the retina are totally fine and perfect health so that means that it's most likely nothing this thing over here, I don't know what it is. It might be nothing as well, but I, like I'm noticing it. I've been noticing it for the past few days, and I've never had anything like that before in my life. It's not behaving like any floater that I've ever read about or that I've ever had, but like it's there. So I'm gonna go there and check it out. And technically, with I mean, like with regards to floaters, there are there are also the kind that are more like in the jagged shapes that are like completely translucent. And I've technically gotten those in my life before. Like sometimes I've just no, mainly when I'm outside or something, I've noticed them like kind of like float up, and then if I look, then they dart away, and then like after a little bit, then they just go away. Those kinds of floaters I technically have have had before, but they've just like gone away, and I do still get them from time to time to this day. But the ones that are like the shadows, the little dark specks, those ones are like more consistently in my eyes, and they're currently still there to this day. Like like even with me, um talking about talking like to this video right now when i was like looking around and everything i could see it zipping around and that's mainly because of the sunlight because of all the light that can illuminate the floaters the sunlight sunlight is the one that does it the most artificial light doesn't do it as much but i guess it really depends on like how much light is going into the eyes because there's been times when i've had my back to the window and then the and then the little dark speck that moves around my eye constantly um it's it's looked kind of like fainter in the light and not as noticeable but then there's other times where i where it is like more prominently there if the if the sunlight is going right on it like it is right now yeah yeah it's there but but the point is is that the floaters and stuff aren't stressing me out the little after image thing flashing in my eye that isn't stressing me out either because it's also not impacting my sleep but it is making me curious and confused as to what it is and i would still like it to get checked out anyways but but yeah it's most likely nothing it's I, i've been i and all of this stuff all the stuff that's been going on with my eyes has kind of like been demotivating me from doing anything creative mainly with drawing and writing stories although i've been wanting to write uh 
like I like I do have a fan fiction account that I made like it was the very first account that I ever made when I was joining the internet like years and years ago and I had posted my uh, stories about uh, Five Nights at Freddy's on there it was back when I was like a huge Five Nights at Freddy's fan and and I was mainly just like typing out the the lore of the story like like as it was described in the games in story formats but I was doing kind of like my take on it and my interpretation of what things happened so it wasn't really it wasn't really like an actual retelling of the story unless that's actually what happened in the story and I very much doubt it um cuz it was just like my take on it so it, it was it still counts as fan fiction and and I did the same thing for uh, Slender the Arrival on the account and and I haven't done anything with that account for years but I am using it again now because I'm wanting to create a, one of those little fan fiction stories about little nightmares and I was going to do one for the very first game but then right as I was get, getting around to doing it then then the teaser trailers and stuff for little nightmares 2 got announced and I was like okay hold on I gotta see what the deal is about this game first and when I checked it out and realized it was a prequel, I was like, okay, then yeah, I'd better start with this one first. And yes, I know that Very Little Nightmares is like a prequel to Little Nightmares 2. And I know that out of all the Little Nightmares games, I have not done it for my channel yet. I tried to, to look on my Bluestacks Android emulator on my computer to see if I could like find it there. It, it does have a lot of games. The Bluestacks emulator does have a lot of of Android games but it doesn't have all of them and and apparently very little nightmares was one of the ones that it doesn't have so I'm gonna have to like find some other way I'm most likely gonna have to get it on this uh, Android uh, thing that I've got right here that I'm using as the webcam I'm gonna have to get it on there and then get some kind of recording program on there so I can record myself I honestly have no idea how it's gonna work but like if you guys want me to play that game then I'll, I'll figure something out but anyways, that boy, this video was longer than I expected it to be. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, the new room has been painted, explaining what's been going on with my eyes. Um, I felt like I kind of had to like just vent everything out because even though I've done it a lot to my parents, I still I still just felt the need to do it now because I because just because that that most of the stuff that I've had with my eyes aren't happening with the rest of my family the only one the, the only thing that's close to it is that my mom also has floaters like I do and I think she most likely has more floaters than I do but my dad and both of my sisters don't have any of these problems now I'm not freaking out about them as much but even so I'm still not as motivated to like do any do any drawings or anything like that um I'll probably I probably will sometime sometime in the future. In terms of the actual edited videos that are all up and ready to go onto my channel, I've only got like two or three of them left, so I've got to start like going to all of the unedited videos of mine, and I've got a lot of those, and I've got to start editing them together so that they can be up and ready to go to YouTube. And those are all the ones that are still with the old this, the old look of the room that's with purple with the white stars and then the dark room with the lamp on my face. If I have the lamp on my face right now, by the way, it just looks like this. It's barely any change at all. And if I have it off, then it's like that. Like, like you can still see my face well enough for that thanks to the window. So I think, I think it's okay. But yeah, I'm looking, I've got like a lot of games. I've actually, uh, I'm actually going to go into my, uh, list of like games for my channel i'm gonna see which which ones i've gotten here that, that that i'm that i'm gonna do for my channel i've got escape the ayuwoki uh, ayuwaki i've got five nights at treasure island i've got a few uh friday night funkin mods although i said that i would think i'm gonna take a break from those i've got super mario 64 which i haven't touched ever since i was a kid on my regular nintendo ds so i'm looking forward to taking a look at that again I've got uh, I've got the forest. I've got a dark deception fan game. I've got Happy's Humble Burger Barn. Although I think that what I've got is just a demo, and that the actual full game is like either not released yet or it's released under a different title, and then I actually have to pay money for it. Um, I've got all I've got I've got like a different Siren Head fan game that is over here, and I've done one. I already did one of those for my channel before but this is like a different one entirely so yeah i've got and then there's a whole bunch of other ones here but yeah that's um 
those are some of the games that I haven't done yet, but that I'm uh, that but that I'm looking forward to do in this room. So you can expect those. Um, as for the ones that I haven't done, the, as for the ones that haven't the ones that I have done, as for the ones that I have done already in my unfinished videos. Oh yeah, I've got a lot. I've got so many of them that I've actually had to like create separate folders for a lot of them, and then all of the one-offs aren't there. Um, the thumbnails for a lot of these aren't loading yet, but uh, I've got one that's called my shortest playthrough ever. I'm kind of curious about what that is. Yeah, I can see that there's a few uh, Friday Night Funkin' mods that are completed already. Oh, I can see Friday Night Funkin' HD is here, so that'll be coming out on my channel. Uh, I've got Among the Sleep, Aperture Tag, I've got Inside. Uh, I think I've got a couple more Raft videos coming out. I've got The Park. Those are all the ones that are in folders, and then all the ones that are uh, that are just empty here. There's uh, more. Oh, there's actually a part three of uh, Slender: The Arrival, Glitches, Bugs, and Funny Moments that's in the makings too. So uh, yeah, keep, keep, keep an eye out for that too. But yeah, I should really start uh, editing some of these as well so that you guys can uh, can see them because I'm really excited for you guys to take a look at them and uh, and uh, see my take on them. They're they're all games that I, like I've heard about before but that I've never actually tried before and that and that now I'm finally trying them out so you can see what I think. So um that'll be all for this video. I I've, I've rambled a heck of a lot. I'm very thirsty. My throat feels parched. I think I'm going to get myself a drink of water and then I'm going to get around to recording something that I've wanted to record in in my list. Um but that will be all. The room is finished. The stuff that's going on with my eyes. Um, expect some new videos once I get my motivation around to uh, fin to, to to actually doing them. And and yeah, with with regards to with regards to like uh, one last thing, one last thing. With regards to Dark Deception coming out, um, the, I I did actually get a, a get like in the in the Steam news for the game. Um, I just got today that like Dark Deception Enhanced and Chapter 4 are coming soon. Chapter 4 was supposed to release in like 2019 and then it got delayed and then the pandemic made us wait even longer and now it's uh, 2021. And I didn't even like know this about it but like Glowstick Entertainment that's working on Dark Deception. I'm pretty sure that, um, Dark that Glowstick Entertainment is like only three people. Like, like, mainly three people, not including any of the voice actors or anything or anybody that they're working in collaboration with. But Glowstick Entertainment, but like, aside from that, Glowstick Entertainment is just like three people. And for them to be making a game of this magnitude is incredible. Honestly, I thought it was like at least a dozen people working on this thing, but no, it's a, it's a lot more than that. Which, which, which uh, makes me understand why uh, Chapter Four is taking so long. They had already said that like uh, it's going to be a humongous one. It's going to be bigger than uh, that. All I think that it's, I think that like Vince had, Vince Living's had said something like it's going to be bigger than the previous three chapters combined. But I'm or something like that. But I'm not sure if it's going to be that big. But if it is, I'm looking forward to it. And as I said, I've tried to stay away from spoilers for, for the game. And then the enhanced edition is like I think that that um, chapters one, two, and three have like the monsters have like have like better kill animations. Um, I think that like ch that um, like 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 the chapters chapter three had introduced boss fights with like the dread duckies and the clown gremlins, but chapters one and two that have the murder monkeys. Uh, Agatha in the Elementary Evil and then the Gold Watchers in Deadly Decadence those all have boss fights now too I do not know what they entail but I'm interested to see I'm very interested um once it comes out I might uh once once like the enhanced edition comes out I might um make videos of me redoing all three of those things and that way you'd actually get to see how I beat Deadly Decadence because I ended up beating it off camera and I told you guys about how I did it but I know that some of you are still confused about like like wait what do you mean so so I'm so I'm gonna be excited to be able to actually play it again to show you guys how I actually managed to beat it and beat it quite easily even though I thought it was a bigger challenge ahead of me but um yeah lots of stuff to look forward to for for all you guys out there um 
And that'll be all for now, because I'm running out of things to say, and I did this whole thing unscripted, and I'm running out of things to say. So, thank you everybody so much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.